Drawing your final draft of your pollinator and habitat should be focused on developing realistic drawings, filling the space, and creating a strong interaction between the pollinator and the habitat. Once it's time for the crayon color application, select several hues of colors that are realistic so that your drawing isn't flat. Make sure to blend the colors in your pollinator and habitat as they appear in nature. When you're ready for your watercoloring, do a light wet wash in the background. Select a color in the palette that is found in nature and that'll complement your piece. Be sure to control the watercolor by keeping it outside of your drawings. Once you're done with your watercolor, set it aside to dry. We're going to move on to the next step, which is building the hexagon box. When you're given your hexagon template, you're going to go back and select a piece of pattern paper that will make up the box that your artwork is going to be inlaid into. So think about what pollinator you're focusing on and choose a colored patterned paper that will go with the theme of your artwork. Once you cut out your colored paper, your template is still attached to it. You're gonna use a ruler, a cushioned surface like a magazine or foam, and a stylus or a pencil. If your pencil breaks, you can use any type of stylus. For instance, I'm using a watercolor brush here. And what we're gonna do is line the ruler up to the template lines and push down hard to score the indentations so that it leaves an indentation or an impression on the colored paper below. When you're lining the ruler up to the template lines, please do not put the ruler directly on the line, but back it up a little bit to allow for whatever width of surface you're using to score so that it falls exactly onto the template lines. So you'll go all the way around. And when you're done, you should see the indentation scored onto the colored paper. Now what you're gonna do is fold the scores all the way around, making sure that you get exactly on the line and you develop a crisp fold. So before you make that crisp fold, go back and forth to make sure that you have the, the line accurate and fold all the way around. have all the folds folded, I'm going to refer back to the template and point out these diamonds on the corners of the hexagon. What you'll need to choose is one slope of the diamond to cut on all sides of the hexagon. So you're just going to cut that one line, rotate, cut the other line, rotate, Cut the other line, rotate all the way around. Now that you've cut all the flaps, you're going to tape the inside of the flap to the inside edge of the box. I'm using simple scotch tape for this. So it's easiest if you stand the box up, fold the crease inside, and simply lay the tape down. Go ahead and pre-cut six pieces of tape this size so that all you need to do is fold it up, pick up your tape, and lay it down. This can happen very quickly 
without having too much thought or planning into it when you pre-cut your tape pieces. Once you have all your, your pieces taped, you're gonna have to go back and reshape your hexagon. Right now it looks a bit like a circle. What you'll use are the guiding corners on all sides to simply create that corner by folding it at that spot. So I'm just rotating the hexagon to the corner, reinforcing a fold right down the middle, and that reestablishes the shape of the hexagon. So now I have the lid to my box and it has the sides in the pattern paper that I chose. And now it's time to develop my pollinator piece, which will get inserted in the middle. Now that your habitats are done, you can assemble them in a huge honeycomb arrangement to make a nice statement in support of our pollinators.